Okay, this video is over module 35. So the first um, topic here is the horizontal line test. Now the horizontal line test is used to determine if a function is one to one. Now if you remember the vertical line test, that was to determine whether something was a function or not. Okay. Um, if it passed the vertical line test, then it was a function. If it didn't pass the vertical line test, then it wasn't necessarily a function. It was just the graph of a relation. Okay. So, but now when we're doing the horizontal line test, um, you are to assume that they are already functions. Okay. And if it doesn't specifically let you know that they are functions, then you must do the vertical line test first and then do the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test just tells you whether or not the function is one to one. So if you haven't passed the vertical line test, there's no need to do the horizontal line test. Okay. And then this is the shorthand for function, but that means function. So the horizontal line test is used to determine whether a function is one to one. So since the description says, are the following functions one-to-one, -one, they've already established that they are in fact functions. And if you visually apply a vertical line test, you'll notice that no matter how many vertical lines you imagine on this graphs, they only cross those vertical lines one time. And so no matter each of these problems fits that vertical line test, okay? Here, same thing, fits the vertical line test. However, we need to apply the horizontal line test and the rules apply the same. You imagine or physically draw a bunch of horizontal lines and if even just one of those vertical lines, I mean, sorry, horizontal lines touches the graph more than one time, it fails and the function is not one-to-one. -one. So here, if I imagine or I draw gobs and gobs of horizontal lines. Each horizontal line only touches the graph one time. Here, there may be of con some concern, right? If I draw a horizontal line right on the x-axis, there's two spots here. However, here it touches because that's a solid dot. Here it does not because that's a hole. So this horizontal line still only touches the graph one time. So this passes the horizontal line test, which means it is one to one. Here, if I just draw one horizontal line right there, you notice that it hits it four times, which means this is not one to one. Here, same thing, if I draw a horizontal line there, it hits it twice, so this is not one to one. Here, it doesn't matter how many horizontal lines I draw, each one of them will only touch the graph one time. So this one is one to one. Same thing for this graph. Every line, no matter what I draw, only touches the graph one time. So this one is one to one. Here, if I draw a horizontal line here, or on the x-axis. Notice that it touches it twice for either of those horizontal lines, which means this is not one-to-one, -one. okay? Now, how do we determine whether the function is one-to-one? -one? Um, or no, this one is telling us. It says, determine whether the two functions are inverses of each other. So the purpose of finding out whether something is one-to-one -one or not is because an inverse can only exist for one-to-one -one functions. So if a function is not one-to-one, -one, then it does not have an inverse. Now this one says determine whether these functions are inverses of each other. So these functions are one-to-one -one functions. I don't need to test that they, they are. I assume them to be because they're asking us to talk about inverses. How do you know if two functions are inverses of one another? Let's go to our chart and see.
here we go it's really tiny so I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit but it says here if any horizontal line intersects the graph of a function in at most one point then the function is one to one which means if it intersects the horizontal line more than once it's not a one to one function and therefore will not have an inverse the second sentence says if the function is one to one then the equation that defines the inverse f inverse is found by interchanging x and y and solving for y and then replacing y with f inverse of x that we'll get to in another topic the third sentence says the graph of f inverse is the mirror image of the graph of f with respect to the line y equals x we'll get to that topic in a little bit as well let's see what else they have to say about inverses um nope it starts getting into exponentials and logarithmics and all that okay well then i'll let you know since the paper doesn't tell you but remember what functions do what inverses do right you know that a square and a square root are inverses of each other why because they undo the operation a square undoes a square root and a square root undoes a square that's why when we're solving for x's we use the opposite or the inverse operation the same thing with plus and with minus right if you want to get rid of a plus you use the opposite operation which is subtraction if you want to get rid of a subtraction use the opposite operation which is a pause a plus or a so that's what inverses do they undo the other operation so what that means and symbols means is if you take one function and apply the other function you should end up with the original input which is x so here's x i've done some kind of operation to it and then i'm doing another kind of operation to that result okay these two operations should be undoing each other which means that i should end up with the original input okay and it doesn't matter which order you do these in you still should end up with the original input so that's what they want me to do they want me to figure out what f of g looks like and they want me to figure out what g of f looks like and if i get just x over here and i get just x over here then i can say yes these two functions undo each other which means they're inverses if i get anything else other than just x then these two functions do not undo each other correctly and I do not have inverses. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So remember, this is the outside function, which means that's the function that I'm gonna write, but instead of x, I'm gonna put a big giant gap, okay? Then what's in the parentheses will go in this parentheses. So g of x is going to go in this parentheses. And then I'm gonna simplify this, okay? So if I simplify this, the two and the two will cancel and I'll have x minus seven plus seven. Well, there's no coefficient in the front anymore and there's no exponent to be squaring or cubing or anything. So I don't really need these parentheses. And then a negative seven and a positive seven will cancel and so I'll just have x. So, so far it's looking like these might be inverses of one another. But I have to make sure that both statements result in an x. So let's go ahead and do this one. So the outside function is g, which means I'm going to leave a big giant gap for the x and then minus 7 over 2. Then what's inside the parentheses here is going to go inside the parentheses here. So that's the function f. So all of that, 2x plus 7, is going inside that parentheses. Now there's no coefficient in the front to multiply, no exponent to apply, so I don't necessarily need those parentheses. So then the positive seven and the negative seven will cancel. I'll have two x over two. These will reduce, leaving me with just one x or x. So in both cases, I just got x after the um, composition. That means that f 
and G are inverses. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, let's write f of g. So I'm going to write this function, but instead of x, I'm going to put a big giant parentheses. And in the parentheses should go g of x, which means 2x should go inside that parentheses. When I multiply that, I get 4x. There's no way to continue simplifying 4x. This is not equivalent just to an x. So immediately, I know that f and g are not inverses. And if that was all they were asking me, I would be done. I wouldn't even need to check the other composition. However, in this topic, Alex wants you to fill in the blank for both compositions. So I would type in 4x over here, um, but I don't know what I would type in for the blank over here, so I have to figure this out. So start writing your g function, but instead of x, put a big parentheses, and inside the parentheses should be f of x. So inside the parentheses should be the 2x. And I end up with 4x. Now although these match, that was not what we were looking for. We were looking to see, does this function undo this function, leaving me with just x all by itself. And this is also not equivalent to x. So these two guys are not inverses of each other. What would I type in the blank? This is what I would type in the blank for f of g. And this is what I would type in the blank for g of f. Okay, And then when it asks me, are they or are they not inverses, I would select they are not inverses. Okay, now here they want us to find the inverses of linear and discrete functions. So this is a linear function and this is a discrete function where it's just a list of points. Okay, now... Um, the h inverse is the easiest one to find because you literally just interchange the x's and y's. So this becomes the point 7, 0, negative 9, 2, negative 1, 4, 1, 7, and then 0, 8. Okay. For g, there's a little bit more going on. The first thing you need to do, instead of writing g, write y. And then on the sheet of paper, it says interchange x and y, which means every single y will become an x and every single x will become a y. And if you have multiple x's and multiple y's, they all need to change, okay? Then you solve for y. So add eight, x plus eight equals three y, divide by three, you get x plus eight over three equal to y. And then finally just change the label. Instead of calling it y equals this, say g inverse equals x plus eight over three. So for the first response, they just want you to find g inverse and we have found it. It's x plus eight over three. For this problem, you really don't need to compute anything. Because you know these guys are inverses of each other, when you do the competition, remember, you should always end up with just the input. But if you really wanted to do the work, start off writing g on the outside. So g is the function 3 with a big blank plus 8. Inverse of g is this function down here. So you get x plus 8 over 3, and I didn't put x because I have a number I need to plug in. And so then let's compute. Well, these 3's will actually reduce each other out. Oops, I put 3x minus 8. This is 3x plus 8. So this is an error. It should be a minus. 3x minus 8. Then we get 4 plus 8 minus 8. These will cancel, so I will just end up with 4. Now this one, we have to look at what we have here for the inverse. So I'm plugging in 0, and I want to know what the response is. So which point am I supposed to be looking at? There are two, right? 
here is where zero was plugged in and eight was the response. So this should be eight.